The cerebrum is the largest region of your brain and it's where all of your consciousness is occurring. So all of your perception of everything you're hearing, seeing, touching, tasting, all of your thinking, it's happening here. So it's so big that it's subdivided into five different lobes. The frontal lobe is where all of your decision-making, planning, general adulting is happening. The parietal lobe contains the somatosensory cortex, which gives you your sense of touch. The temporal lobe has your auditory cortex, as well as Wernicke's area. Wernicke's area allows you to interpret language, and it makes sense that it would be close to the auditory cortex. The occipital lobe contains the visual cortex, and the last lobe we cannot see from the outside. You would have to pull back the temporal lobe to see the insula. So on this model, they've just removed the brain stem and kept the insula on top so you can see it. The insula is called that because it is insulated. It's hiding on the inside of your brain. It has the gustatory cortex for taste, olfactory cortex for smell, it also allows you to perceive visceral sensation. So that's the sensation of your organs. So when somebody touches you on your arm, you're going to feel that in the somatosensory cortex in the parietal lobe. But if you have an upset stomach or your bladder's full, you're going to perceive that with your insula. The wrinkles and folds in the cerebrum can be used as landmarks to tell the lobes apart. So the hill part of the wrinkle is called a gyri. The fold part is called a sulci. The lateral sulcus is pretty easy to spot and it separates the frontal lobe from the temporal lobe. The parieto-occipital sulcus can be seen on the medial surface of the brain, and I think you're going to understand what that separates. Lastly is the central sulcus. The central sulcus is separating the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. In front of it would be the precentral gyrus, so if in front is the precentral gyrus, the gyrus behind the central sulcus would be the postcentral gyrus. The precentral gyrus contains your primary motor cortex, which makes sense because your frontal lobe is where all of the decision making is happening, including your decisions about where and how to move. The postcentral gyrus is the somatosensory cortex, which makes sense because as I already mentioned, your sense of touch happens in your parietal lobe. So now we're looking at the posterior view. Sulci are just wrinkles in the cerebrum but we also have fissures, which are larger cracks separating entire structures. So the transverse fissure going side to side separates the cerebrum from the cerebellum. The longitudinal fissure separates the right half and the left half of the cerebrum. And we would call each half a cerebral hemisphere. So the hemispheres are mostly separate, but they're connected at the midline by the corpus callosum. So this is a white matter tract. It's a bundle of axons, which are allowing impulses to pass between the right and left hemispheres. Sometimes this structure might be cut in somebody with a seizure disorder to prevent a seizure from spreading from one hemisphere to the other hemisphere. If you look below the corpus callosum, you'll see the septum pellucidum. 
The word septum always means it's a wall or a divider between structures. The septum in your nose is the wall between your nostrils. The septum pellucidum is a wall between your ventricles. Ventricles are empty spaces within your brain which are filled with cerebrospinal fluid. Each half of the cerebrum has a lateral ventricle. That's what the septum pellucidum is separating, is those two lateral ventricles. And now that we've removed the top half of the brain, if you're disoriented, we're looking at a superior view here. Now that we've removed the top half of the brain, we can see there's an outer layer of gray matter called the cerebral cortex. Gray matter is a concentration of cell bodies. So that's where neurotransmitters are being released. That's where synapses are. The inner layer is cerebral white matter. So those are the axon tails sending impulses to different areas within the brain. There are other gray matter structures within the cerebrum. On this model, we can see the caudate nucleus and hippocampus, which are both concentrations of neuronal cell bodies. That's why they're called gray matter. The caudate nucleus is part of a group of subcortical gray matter called basal nuclei. The hippocampus is part of the limbic system. Remember the limbic system is a functional group of structures which are related to memory processing and emotions. So the limbic system has structures in both the diencephalon, which is not part of the cerebrum, and the cerebrum. And we can see there is a band of white matter that starts on the outside right below the septum pellucidum. That is the fornix. And the fornix is connecting structures in the diencephalon to the hippocampus so that impulses can be transmitted between them. If we angle the model to the side a little bit, now we can clearly see the internal capsule. So the internal capsule is a bunch of ascending and descending neurons. Um, actually, a lot of the descending neurons are motor neurons. So when you think to move, the impulse that causes you to move flows down through the internal capsule. And the last structure I'm going to mention is the corona radiata. So the corona radiata starts once the internal capsule reaches the height of the caudate nucleus. And it's where the axons are kind of fanning out. That's why it's called the corona radiata. It means radiating crown. I can't tell you exactly where it ends, so I'm not going to try, but that is where it starts. So that's all I have to say about the brain today. I hope you found something interesting. Have a great day and have fun learning.